When the folks over at Corsair watched my 9900K review, they saw I was coupling it with the H100i Pro, and although it did okay, it wasn't their best offering. And after this, they decided to send me over their H115i Platinum, which not only has new and improved RGB bling, both with the 140mm ML fans, but also has a bigger, taller block and a new and improved cold plate, which I can say does indeed help with cooling performance. But speaking of cooling performance, today we're going to be testing out this cooler, comparing it against an EK Custom Water Loop, as well as H100i Pro, and a big air cooler from Cooler Master on the 9900K at 5GHz in the 25 degree ambient controlled environment. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and right here we have the Platinum, the new and improved upgraded edition. So Corsair are not just promising an aesthetic upgrade, including some fancy RGB bling with the fans. They've also promised better cooling performance from the actual block itself. And so mounting this on the 9900K at five gigahertz, this CPU, by the way, puts out a lot of heat, 200 watts on a small ring bus die. So that is a lot of heat to keep under control. And uh, pulling out the temperature results for you guys straight away, comparing it head to head with the previous uh, cooler that I had here, the only cooler that I had in the studio that could keep the 9900K under wraps at these temperatures was the EK Waterblock solution. Now, I've actually got another CPU in another 9900K which is soldered, so I decided to do the testing on that as opposed to my delitted CPU, so the numbers may uh, differ from my original delitted video where they were a little bit lower after I delitted. But regardless, I want to keep this more real world where someone going out buying a 9900K with a solder on it's probably not going to delit it, and hence they're probably going to get an all in one solution like this and want to know how it performs. So, testing it straight away against the EK Waterblock solution 98 degrees, and that came in with a noise of 58 decibels with its fans on max. And this is what I used in the review. If you haven't seen that already, I'll put the link up here. Then we have the H15i Platinum. And we've got two results here because we've got max fan speeds, which came in at 95 degrees. So it beat out the EK Waterblock solution, which is much more expensive, by the way, than this solution here coming in at 170 USD. Uh, but then we had the fans on the out of the box quiet mode as well. And it got 101 degrees at these settings, which I was honestly blown away because the noise levels were 34 decibels at these settings, which was incredibly whisper quiet. I had to turn my main rig off just to get an accurate reading, and that's over a meter away from where I was doing the tests, and that was on idle as well. And so immediately coming out of this, the Platinum definitely is improved over the previous uh, H110 that I'm using in my main rig. When we put this up on the test, that got 99 degrees with 100% fan speeds on its included 140 mil fans. So it's beating out the previous generation, but it's also beating out the H100i Pro as well, which is a 240 mil solution. And if you haven't seen the original review, that actually failed at five gigahertz. It couldn't keep the 9900K at five gigahertz under control. And so in this test, it got 110 degrees before it actually throttled and it couldn't complete the tests. And that was with noise levels of 59 decibels. Moving over now to the MA620P, which is Cooler Master's air cooler. Very solid build quality. I do like this thing, especially for its price performance too. And that was getting 110 degrees and it suffered the same fate as the H110i Pro. Uh, but that had 55 decibels in terms of its noise levels. So that tapped out as well. The H100i Pro tapped out. So when it comes to uh, the latest and greatest CPU from Intel, you're definitely gonna want to get some good cooling if you wanna get a high overclock like five gigahertz, for example. And now this is the second 9900K I have here. So they both of them need around 1.35 volt at five gigahertz. So maybe I'm just losing the silicon lottery a second time in a row. But ultimately, just like the motherboard reviews that I've done, it was good to see that when we're putting out more heat, components like this platinum cooler and the motherboards that I tested on their VRMs, for example, can handle the heat that this CPU puts out. So in ways, I'm kind of glad that I'm giving you guys a worst case scenario with the advice on whether this cooler can handle it. And it passed with flying colors. I'm really impressed by this to the point where I'm going to be getting another one of these, putting in my main rig, and then keeping this one for a test bench because the cooling performance, as we said just before, was beating out that of the EK water block solution and that is much more expensive. So 170 USD, especially compared to previous generations, it does have a steeper asking price, but they've improved the cooling performance and the RGB bling, I'm not gonna lie, 
it does look really good. The 140mm ML RGB fans do a phenomenal job of staying quiet, but also having the individual zone lighting, as well as the block that you can control in the IQ software. And just opening up the IQ software, I can seriously get lost in this for days. Uh, if you've got a Corsair mouse keyboard, and a RGB mouse pad and RAM, and also a RGB Corsair headset, for example, you can link all this up in the software and then make really cool effects. For example, I did the visor and sequential settings with a layer over the top of each other, and it added a really cool like static effect where the lighting then came over that, and it just looked really cool. So you can set up all these custom effects in the software itself, and then have all your uh, RGB Corsair devices linked so to speak, and it will make for some really cool effects. Another cool feature with the software as well is that you can use the RGB to monitor temperatures where you can have green as safe, orange as getting hot, and then red as danger zone, and you can control the individual temperatures as well in the software itself. Anyway, as wrapping up this review with Corsair, they include a five-year warranty. The price, as we said before, is 170 USD. In Australia, it's 224 Aussie, so I'm glad to see that Corsair is fixing the Aussie pricing so they're definitely listening to feedback, and that means us Aussies can get a decent deal, and we're not so jealous of the US pricing, especially when we look at it in terms of triple P compared to that of the US dollar. But ultimately, the build quality, the installation, it was all a breeze. There's no sharp edges, so you won't bust your thumb up like I've done here on previous other PC parts here in the studio. And uh, also, there's AMD installation as well if you want to get AM4, Ryzen as well. So there it all is, guys. Five-year warranty, solid build quality, Got the bling to match and the improved cooling performance, beating that of a custom water solution with its fans on 100%. So really impressed what Corsair have done here. Of course, you've got that $170 USD price tag. That of course is expensive, but with anything premium, you're gonna pay a premium. And if you're getting a 9900K, you're certainly gonna to want to get something like this cooler here on the bench to keep that thing under wraps, especially if you wanna get it to five gigahertz. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comment section below what you think of the RGB Platinum series. Do you wanna get one or do you just think RGB is too much for you in late 2018? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. To the point where you could probably write your name, in these zones uh <sighs> and at these low noise and at these no welcome back to tech yesterday let's get straight into some temperature figures for you guys with the h115i platinum welcome back to tech yesterday can you stop banging fucking ladders and everything i'm trying to record a video oh, so you want me to make some more noise? no just keep it down <laughs>